Welcome back everyone. Today we're going to look at absolute and relative references and we're going to use that in the context of a VLOOKUP function. So the first thing I want to do is just add a little bit of data to my spreadsheet. So I'm going to copy that from another document on my end and feel free to do so as well. And I'm just going to copy that into my spreadsheet so that I have a whole crew here. I'm going to then add uh, something pretty important, which is columns for the rate and the guaranteed hours for my freelancers. So we don't need them to be that big. We're going to do rate in column E, guarantee um, in column F. And the let's start filling that in. So I'm going to say, okay, this is maybe like a 400 for 12 hours. And this is going to be 500, and maybe it's going to be a flat rate, uh, and so forth. Uh, I'm just going to enter that. Uh, I'll do a little bit of copy pasting again, just to save us some time here. Um, so you'll see when I pasted my information, it had formatting. So let's let's go and add that. I'm going to select column E. I'm going to say I want this to be formatted as currency, and I want this to be centered. So Command Shift E. And sending my guarantee, I want that to be centered. Uh, one more thing, uh, just because later on it's going to be useful, I'm going to add a row in the middle here where we just have a, a little blank here. So finally, uh, I have a rate, I have a guarantee. That should allow me to find out what my hourly rate is. So let's add one more column and name that hourly. And here, uh, I need to find my hourly rate. Um, and if I was working outside of California, it'd be pretty simple. All I have to do is say, like, all right, 400 divided by 12 pay hours, and that's 33. But we know that in California, overtime starts at 8 hours, not at 40 hours per week. So we need to create a formula that's going to give me the correct calculation based on the guarantee. So that's what we're doing today. All right. So let's start by creating a new tab. And I'm just going to call that, um, you know, guarantees. So in my uh, new tab, I'm going to make a simple table where I'm going to say, okay, what my guarantee is, and then how many hours of straight time, how many hours of time and a half, and how many hours of double time uh, is for this guarantee. And if I add all that up, it's going to give me my pay hours. So let's uh, let's center this. This can be a little bit smaller right here. And let's get to work. So if I have an eight-hour guarantee, I'm going to have eight hours of straight time, and then nothing of time and a half, nothing of double time. And if I have ten, it's going to be eight to zero. 12 is going to be 8, 4, 0, and let's keep going a little bit. 14 is going to be 8, um, uh, 4, and 2. And if I have a 16 hour guarantee, 8, 4, and 4. And finally, we need a flat rate, and flat is essentially nothing, so I'm not going to have any uh, pay hours here. Uh, now I just need to add up all my hours and multiply them by the uh, the multiplier up there, so that gives me a formula that looks a little bit like 8 plus, and that into a pin parenthesis and say 0 times 1.5, all right, plus 0 times 2. So logically, I get 8, and then if I drag down my formula, it's going to give me my pay hours for each row. So I see if I have a 16 hour guarantee, that's really 22 pay hours. All right. So that's the first thing we needed here in order to uh, do our calculations. But then we need to figure out how to tell the spreadsheet that if I have a 12 hour guarantee, it's, it's 14 pay hours. So that's going to be part two. I'm just going to uh, put a little bit of uh, formatting here so that it's a little clear. And then we're going to go to the side. So that's here we're going to build what's called a V lookup uh, for vertical lookup. And that's a really, really handy formula. 
Uh, now, a quick note: if you're you know more advanced than you know what I'm going to explain, um, you might say, "Well, wouldn't it be better to do an index match formula?" And I would say, "Absolutely, you're correct." But index match is a little bit tricky to learn, and VLOOKUP is also a little bit difficult, but not as much as a index match. So we're going to start with VLOOKUP, and then uh, uh, a later tutorial we'll look at index match at some point. So let's start with the syntax of VLOOKUP. So I'm going to need a guarantee, and uh, I need to find what my pay hours are. So let's say 12, and then this is what I'm, I'm looking for right here. Here's how VLOOKUP works. So I say equal VLOOKUP. And I open a parenthesis. And you know, if you're not familiar with how a function works, just look at what the, the helper box tells you, and you can even click learn more and have even more information about the function. But in this case, it tells me it wants a search key. So that search key is what I'm what I'm looking for. And here in my table, I'm looking for my my guaranteed hours. I want to know what the pay hours for 12 guarantee is. So that's my search. Then I'm going to put a comma and I need to tell the formula where this information can be found and also where the, um, the, the pay hours can be found as well. So I need to give it the whole, the whole table. That's, that's the range we need. And right off the bat, something very important to remember is that for a VLOOKUP to work, your search key, so here my guaranteed hours, needs to be in the first column of your range. It just has to. That's the only way for it to work. So keep that in mind. Next, I'm going to put another comma. And the next thing the formula wants is the index. Index means column number. So in my table, column A is column 1, then B is 2, 3, 4, 5. I need to tell the formula which column has the answer I'm looking for. So if I'm searching for guarantee, the answer I want is pay hours. So that's the fifth column. One, two, three, four, five. So I'm going to type five. And finally, the last argument is is sorted. So if you're working with a table that has values that are always sorted from smallest to largest, you could type true. But in our case, not only we have the flat, but we, I don't know, we may later on have a guarantee and it's not going to be ordered and we want this to work no matter what, so just type false, and like 99% of your VLOOKUP formulas are going to say false at the end. So if you don't quite understand what this means yet, just don't worry about it, just type false, and you'll be fine. And if I close my parenthesis and hit enter, you'll see that that gives me 14. So I'm going to paste that result right here, and then I'm going to put a little apostrophe in front of it so that we can see the formula for later on for where we need to, to build a new one. So um, let's try that. We know that the VLOOKUP is looking at G2 to find the answer. So if I change this from, ten, from 12 to 10, my, my pay hours here are going to change. I go 11. The way the VLOOKUP works is just it looks in the first column, finds the search key, so it finds 10, then it goes five columns to the right, so two, three, four, five, and it returns 11. All right, so now if we just try to, uh, you know, build it very quickly, we had great guarantee, pay hours, and then we want to know what our hourly rate. So let's do 400 across the board, and then I want to know for 12, 10, and 8. Um, and here in my pay hours, I need to build my VLOOKUP. So equal VLOOKUP, our search key is going to be our guarantee here. Our range is going to be our table. Our answer is in the fifth column. And then we're just going to type false. And as we did earlier, it works. 12 gives me a 14-hour guarantee. Now, if I drag this down, I see it worked here, but it didn't work there. Why didn't it work there? So whenever you have an error, the first thing to do is look up at the error message. And you say, did not find value 8 in VLOOKUP evaluation. So what this means is that it looked in the table 
and did not find eight. And that's kind of weird because eight is up here, it's the first one. So why didn't it find it? So let's take another look. And if I double click and show my formula, I'll notice that my range here, my range starts on row three. And when I click here, it shows me it starts here and it excluded the eight at the top. Why did it do that? Well, when I dragged my formula down, it, it, it dragged everything down. So here, for instance, it looks at H5, which is 12, and then it looks at this range for the table. And then if I look at the formula under, it looked at H6, so it went down one row. That's smart, that's what we want. But it also went down one row here. It, it skipped the header and now it starts at eight. And then on the next one, it looked again at H7, which is what we want, but here now it's keep the header and the first row, and so that breaks the formula. So I'm doing this because I want to explain how relative and absolute references work. Um, when we build our VLOOKUP formula, we want the guarantee to be dynamic, we want that to change, but we don't want this to change ever. The, the information is always going to be in that table, so we want this to not move as we move our uh, formula down a few rows. And for that, we need to add those dollar signs. We throw that in conditional formatting. We need to add dollar signs to say, do not change this. Make this an absolute reference instead of a relative reference. So you can just type dollar signs in front of the column and the number for each. And that locks everything in place. Uh, you can choose to do it just in front of the column or the number based on if you wanted to move sideways or up and down. But generally speaking, at the beginning, you're going to want to do everything. It's going to make it more clear. Uh, if you like shortcuts, then you can, on the Mac, use function F4, and that's going to cycle through the different states of uh, relative versus absolute versus just the row is uh, absolute versus just the column is absolute. So I'm going to I'm going to keep it with dollar cents in front of the, the column and row number to make it easier. So now that I've done that, let's delete this. And now I can really drag this down. And now it works. And when I click on this, I can see that, yep, H7, that's what we want. That's the relative reference. It moved as I dragged on the formula. But this here, my table, is always the same. It hasn't changed. All right, so we built that. Now we just need to find our hourly rate, and that's very simple. This is going to be our rate divided by our pay hours. And if I drag it down, I have my answer for each row. So that's VLOOKUP. We're going to go back to our crew list, and we're going to build it over there. But in order to make our life easier, I'm going to name this range first. This way I can use it in my VLOOKUP. Instead of saying something cryptic like, you know, A1, E7, we're not sure what this means, we're going to, to give this a name. So I select the whole table, and then we go to Data, Name Ranges, and we see our, you know, we had our positions we created in the first lesson with our chart of accounts. This I'm going to call uh, Pay Hours, why not? And if you're paying attention, you notice, like, I capitalize my hours, so in coding, when you write function names, you tend to go all lowercase except for when there's another word that starts and you put a capital letter. This is absolutely not necessary. Um, it's just I try to force myself to do this so that when I switch to coding, I, I keep my good manners. But um, you can type anything you want. Just don't put spaces in between. That's the only thing that will, that will break the name range. So here we go. We're going to click Done. And then let's go back to our crew list. And now we need to build our VLOOKUP. So uh, let's get into it. We need equal VLOOKUP. And then what are we searching? We're searching for the guarantee. Then we put a comma. Then we need our range. That's what we just named. So we're going to say pay hours. And you see as you start typing it, it will find it. So you can either click on it or just uh, finish typing it. Then we want another comma. And also, by the way, the other advantage of having a name range is that even if you drag this down, well, this, this is already an absolute reference, so it's never going to change. OK, now, what's my index? My index was the column where my uh, information was stored. So again, that was you know 1, 2, 3, 
four, five. So column five. So oops, can I go back in there? So I need a five, and then I'm going to type false and close my parentheses. Right. So I have my VLOOKUP. It worked. It, it found my pay hours for my guarantee. Now all I need to do is just divide this by that. So I can just go into my formula and in front of my VLOOKUP, I'm going to say, hey, I want to I wanna take E2 and I want to divide that by my VLOOKUP. So I hit enter and I see it gives me 2857. So all good. Now, because it's an hourly rate, I may want four decimal points here. So I'm going to go to the top and I'm going to say add decimal, uh, increase the decimal place. So now I get my four digit. So let's go ahead and drag this down. And technically it's going to work because it's going to, it's going to always change. It's going to use a relative reference for this, but not for the table. So let's drag it down. And it, it worked in most places, but where I have my flat here, that's not working. And where I have nothing, it's also not working. So in the next lesson, we'll look at how to fix those errors so that our formula works no matter what's in the left column here. Uh, stay tuned. I hope this was useful. VLOOKUP is one of the main functions in Google Sheets. You can do a ton of stuff with it. We'll practice more down the road. If you didn't understand fully how that worked, that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll go over it again, and very soon you'll be a master at VLOOKUP. Bye, everyone.